Hi, my name is Mike, and in this instructional video series, I'll show you how to build this plane or one of your own design using simple build techniques and tools that you can find in most home shops. This plane is a 30cc plane. Uh, it happens to be running a 35 on it right now, and it uses foam core sheeted wings and a built-up light ply fuselage. This is the exact same plane but in a high wing version. Same build techniques, super easy to build in any home shop. This happens to be a flying wing. You hit the grass. Exactly the same build techniques. Essentially, it is one of these wings with a glow engine strapped on front of it. That one happens to be a 55, an OS 55. Uh, great for pylon racing, great for combat. <laughs> Let's go in the shop and see how it's done. Hi, and welcome to the shop. Uh, excuse the mess, but it's a small shop and it's extremely busy in here. I don't know exactly how many videos this is going to boil down to be, but they'll fall into three major categories. One, everything having to do with fuselage. Uh, two, everything having to do with the sheeted parts, that's the wings and the tail section, and, and of course the turtle deck, and then finally the canopy. Uh, so before we get started on uh, working on the fuselage, which will be video number two, let's look at these three major components uh, in a couple of minutes of detail each. Let's take just a minute and talk about the fuselage. Uh, like I mentioned before, this is a light ply box style construction. It's very rigid, very durable, uh, still very light. Uh, light ply is easy to come by. I buy this in four by eight sheets. I think it cost me about 38 or $39 for a sheet. It's a whole lot cheaper buying it by the large sheet than if you buy smaller quantities. Uh, this particular plane or this particular fuselage, I've put two three millimeter carbon rods uh, running from here to here. That's the weakest part of any fuselage. Uh, and that just gives me a little more insurance. Uh, I fly this plane 3D a lot. Uh, low area rolls, uh, hover, touching the tail on the ground. And uh, that gives me uh, just a little more strength back here in the back end. Probably overkill for normal flying, but uh, I fly this plane low to the ground and, and it takes a beating. Uh, a little more insurance in the, in the way of build design is these two aluminum uh, brackets, uh, similar to this, or, or that is actually one of them. And I'll show you how to make these in a, a later video without the use of a welder. Uh, you can do that in any shop. 
uh, and they are epoxied in up here to the, to the back of the firewall. That allows us to run a thinner firewall and avoids that firewall weakness area up here. It distributes the load all the way back to the wing tube area. Uh, and despite the fact that this small fuselage runs a 35 cc, and it does hit the ground uh, a lot. Uh, I do make mistakes flying 3D a lot. Um, and I have never had a, a firewall area weakness uh, come up. So uh, that is a very strong, very durable, yet lightweight design for the front to help distribute that load. Another nice thing about uh, building and designing your own planes is you're limited only by your imagination. These two are the same build techniques, uh, the same plane essentially, except this happens to be a high wing version of that. You can change your templates uh, to meet whatever needs you want. As a matter of fact, the next version that we'll be walking through uh, the build on this fuselage, and I'll show you how to build the templates, we're gonna widen this fuselage about one inch, just to make it a little easier to add a little bit larger motor on the front. Uh, it works fine with a VLE 30. You can still get the, the standoffs on this four inch uh, fuselage firewall up here. Uh, but a 35 is a little bit wider. Uh, the standoffs are a little bit wider on a 35, at least the top two are. Uh, and some motors are a little bit wider up top. I even thought about putting a uh, 50cc motor on, on this plane just to see how it flies. Uh, and I'll need to be a little bit wider. So uh, the flexibility that you have in, in using a router system, a router table system to build your parts uh, is a huge advantage for the home shop owner. Uh, we don't have CNC machines, we don't have laser cutters, uh, but it is very easy to build templates like this to uh, produce parts. This happens to be a bottom for this plane here. Uh, super easy for us to make those in a shop and it provides us a lower cost, uh, a lot simpler way to produce these parts uh, and it seems to work out very well. Let's look real quickly at our foam core sheeted parts. And we have turtle deck here, wing here, aileron here. Uh, you can see obviously that this is a foam core aileron with 1 16th loss of sheeting on either side and some triangle stock down the back to accept the hinges and uh, for a profile on the very back, a smaller piece of triangle stock. It makes for a very, very rigid assembly, incredibly durable, very tough. Uh, this is a vertical stabilizer and rudder assembly, obviously. Uh, again, very, very durable uh, and lightweight. I've tumbled this plane down the runway many times, uh, and I have never broken a tail section assembly. It's an incredibly strong way to build those planes. Here you can see a rudder before it gets uh, its final trim around the outside. And of course, you can see the foam core sheeting in the middle. And here is that foam before it gets the sheeting for the rudder there. Uh, to route that out, uh, we'll use a router template just like we do on the fuselage sides and, and the other fuselage parts to make that from a larger uh, foam and sheeted blank. The foam core wings, this is what the core itself looks like. Of course, it goes in, in, in the other two parts, which we call the husk, the bottom and the top part that it's cut out of. Uh, we'll need to drill a hole to accept the wing tube. This is just a fiberglass tube that we use our aluminum wing tube we're actually going to use in the plane to make these. Super easy to do. Again, we'll have a video on how to do that uh, and on how to drill the holes uh, for the aileron servo wire here and for the wing tube socket itself. And there's a, a light ply false rib right there. It just adds some stability to hold the end of this wing tube. Again, it's a very, very durable design, easy to make, uh, super cheap. This piece of foam here is probably two and a half dollars for a, a piece of foam that size. So it's incredibly cheap, incredibly durable, uh, and it's a lot of fun to build these planes like this. Now you could build this fuselage and run the plane either as a flat top design, like a stick, and it flies very, very well that way, or build the turtle deck and the canopy that goes on there. It just makes it look a lot cooler. I see no difference in flight performance between the two variations, uh, but I have to admit that the turtle deck and canopy look pretty cool. Uh, I was the most apprehensive about building the canopy of all stages of building this plane. Uh, I had never thermal molded plastic before, but once I did it, I found out that uh, that apprehension was completely unfounded. It's super easy to do. 
All you need is a box, and this box happens to be just two by fours with a piece of MDF on the bottom, piece of MDF on the top with a lot of holes cut in it, and a frame that you can staple the PTEG plastic to. And I use uh, clear 0.04 PTEG. I buy it in four by eight sheet rolls. It's a lot cheaper that way. And I think I pay about $80 for a roll, but I get a lot of canopies out of a four by eight roll. So price comes down to about $4 a canopy by the time you divide it all up, which is pretty good. And most of the major cities have a distributor that you can buy that PTEG from. So that shouldn't be a problem. So I staple the PTEG to the bottom of this frame. Some guys use wing bolts and in other ways and you know clamps and other ways to staple to uh, attach it. I find it easier just to use a stapler and staple it to the bottom. And so you put your plastic on the bottom of uh, your frame, put it over a heat source. My heat source just happens to be half of a barrel uh, with two oven elements in it. Be very very careful with your wiring. Make sure you know what you're doing with your wiring. It's not hard at all. It's just I don't want anybody getting electrocuted. Uh, and then you use your heat source to heat the PTG up. Once it starts to sag, you'll pull it up. You have shop vac hooked in these holes here, and you put it down, and it pulls it directly down onto the mold. Uh, this happened to be my very first pull, and I was pleasantly surprised how well it came out. It's a perfect canopy. So the hardest thing in, in this whole process and it turned out not to be that hard, was making the mold itself. And that's just a matter of taste, whatever you think the, the right uh, shape and dimension happens to be. This one is foam, just regular white foam. I took a piece of scrap foam, glued it to the top of a piece of MDF, and just started sanding and shaping to the shape that I want. A buddy of mine who does paint and body work uh, took some Bondo and put it on the top of it and sanded it super slick, and uh, it comes out real well. I don't know how many canopies I've made with this one mold, but it, it works very, very well. And at this point, we're making a larger canopy mold for a 50cc plane. So I'll show you that and see how that comes out. It should be done in the next day or two. So my point is, don't be intimidated like I was and don't build canopies. It is uh, very, very easy to do, a lot easier than I would have ever thought. And it makes your plane look a, a lot better than it would just flat. So I think that's a pretty good summary of where this build series is going and what we're going to be doing. Uh, whether you're a new pilot or new to building or a veteran builder, I think there are going to be some techniques and, and building processes here that you can learn from. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So uh, without further ado, let's move on to video number two in this series where we'll make the templates and the fuselage. Join me there. Don't forget to hit subscribe.